Welcome to Getting Started Part 3, Setting Up and Using the Patient Database. We will cover entering clients into the system, editing information on existing clients, setting up appointment reminders, using the memo field, auditing insurance information for completeness, how to change patient status, how to search a database, and finally deleting a patient's database. You will find that entering a new client in the database is very straightforward with TherapyAppointment.com. Be aware that if you are permitting clients to set their first appointment with our online scheduling system, they will be queued to enter most of this information for you, saving you much work. Their information will appear in your database automatically and you will receive a message in the system to inform you the client has completed the process. In order for the clinician or admin staff to enter a new client into the system, go to the blue buttons and click on New Patient. If you are working from an administrative screen, you must first choose the therapist account you will be working in. Then you can click on the New Patient button once you're in that therapist account. You will be taken to a screen where you will input the information into the required areas. Most of this area is self-explanatory, however, I do want to highlight some fields that are of special concern. First, make sure you are putting the first and last names in the correct fields. If you are searching for a client and cannot find them, it's typically because the first name was entered into the last name field. The patient referred by box is optional and is there for your information only. However, you will be able to create a patient list by referral source if you do use this area. In the next section, if you are entering a client into the system in order to do back billing or you are electing to not use our electronic chart note function, you will need to enter the DSM or ICD-9 or 10 diagnosis codes in this field. Charting on a client will require that you choose a diagnosis code and will automatically update this area of the patient database. If your client has more than one diagnosis, please separate the diagnosis codes by a comma, omitting any spaces between the comma and the start of the next code. The rest of this area is typically only needed for the filing of workman's comp claims, and it is optional information for the majority of insurance companies. However, the fields that indicate the date of current illness or the first date of similar illness will be automatically set to the date you created the client into the database. Be sure that if you are back billing on a client that these dates are set correctly. If you are billing a first session assessment to insurance that took place three weeks ago but these dates are set to today's date, your claim may be rejected. The email address area. Please be sure and collect an email address and allow the client to choose a username and password that they will remember. This will enable you to communicate with them via HIPAA compliant encrypted email with TherapyAppointment.com and will also allow you to send them statements, super bills, and receipts via that same encryption. This will save you time as well as money on postage, ink, paper, and envelopes for billing. If you wish to allow your clients to schedule their future appointment online themselves, they must have a username and password entered into these fields. Again, if they set up their first appointment online with you automatically, these fields will already be created. When you signed up for TherapyAppointment.com, you were emailed a Word document that you can provide your current clients. This document is editable by you and allows your current clients to indicate their preferred usernames and passwords. They can also give permission for other contact information. And again, if the client is filling out this information online, they will be prompted to use their username and passwords for themselves. Watch our video on online scheduling to assist in your understanding of the features. In the patient contact information, this includes the patient's address and phone numbers. At the bottom of this area, you are prompted for the client's cell phone carrier. The cell phone carrier information is necessary if the client is choosing to receive text message appointment reminders. The next section asks about emergency contacts, responsible party, and is optional information that you may or may not want to gather. One of the many benefits that TherapyAppointment.com provides for you and your clients is an automated reminder system. 
Your clients have the option of choosing automated telephone reminders, email reminders, or text message reminders. Patients find the text message and email reminders especially helpful as they can review their appointment dates and times with a quick glance versus listening to their voicemail or just noticing they've missed a call from you which usually means they make a return call to your office. Now we come to the all-important insurance section. If the client happened to fill in this information online for you, he or she would have been asked to type his insurance company name, member ID number, and group number, as well as the insurance party information into these fields. Note that your client only indicates the insurance company they have. It is up to you to verify the insurance and where claims should be sent. I am sure that those of you seasoned in billing insurance know that a different company may be billed for mental health sessions. It is always prudent to contact the insurance company before seeing a client. Once you have verified the insurance company to be billed, go to the Primary Insurance Company drop-down menu. Note that the default setting here is Private Pay. Leave it set to Private Pay only if no third parties will be billed for this client. Click and scroll with your mouse to choose the insurance company to be billed for these sessions. This drop-down menu should look familiar to you, as it is the insurance database that we just completed in the Getting Started Part 2 video. Choosing an insurance company to be billed for this client's sessions, choose TherapyAppointment.com to audit all fields necessary for insurance billing when you exit this page. Let's move on down the page and look at more information about insurance. There are fields here for you to indicate to yourself and the system what the client's typical copay is, how their insurance pays, for example, 80%, 100%, and if there is a deductible that has not yet been met. This information is typically provided to you by the insurance company via a phone call or a visit to their website. This next section is for you to note if there is a limitation on the number of sessions in general due to managed care. Maybe this insurance only allows the client to have 20 outpatient sessions a year. If there is no limit, please put the number 999 in the box and the system will know not to count those sessions down for you. Next, if the insurance company requires a pre-authorization for services, there are data fields for you to list an authorization code and the date range it is valid for, as well as number of sessions allowed. The other fields allow you to notate who in your business called to get the authorization and the information for the insurance representative you talked to on the phone. TherapyAppointment.com will count these authorizations down for you. In fact, the system triggers that countdown to happen when a therapist locks his notes for the day. If you are entering a current client into the system, please remember to calculate and enter the number of sessions remaining in the authorization on the first day you scheduled them on our system in order to be accurate. You can adjust this number at any time. In the next section, there is room for you to enter a client's secondary insurance company if you choose to file secondary insurance claims. Secondary insurance claims cannot be submitted electronically at this time. We will, however, cue you to print paper claims once the primary insurance company pays. We cover this process in our billing insurance webinar. At the bottom of this area, you will see a memo field. This field is here for you to list any additional information that you may want to keep track of. This memo field will be seen by your admin staff, so please do not use it to record confidential client information that is not intended to be seen by others in your office. You will then have the option to go back and fill in the blank missing information or to continue on and exit the system. If the audit recognizes items missing but you do not yet have the information available to you for entry, Rest assured that TherapyAppointment.com will cue you to enter that data before it recommends submitting an insurance claim on this client. Saving this information means the client has been added to your patient database. You can retrieve the information about this client by going to the dashboard page and clicking on the Old Patient button. 
This will bring you up a list of your current clients. You can refine or even start your search for a client by typing in a letter or two and their last name and clicking on the Old Client button. If you prefer to search by nickname or first name, start the name search off with a percentage sign. This will shorten the list for you to choose from. Once you have located your client, click on their name to reveal their patient information page at the top of your screen. Note that each patient has an information page and the column of white buttons is specific to them. These buttons will allow you to view and print or view and edit certain features. You have the ability to go back and edit any of the information on this client information page by clicking the Edit Info button, scrolling to the area you wish to change, then simply delete the current entry and type in the corrected entry. Remember to save your changes by scrolling to the bottom of the page and clicking the Save button. Now let's review several options you have from this Edit Info screen that you did not have available to you when entering the information from the New Patient button. First, at the top of the screen you have a field to enter an alert for the next session. This alert will be highlighted on the client's information page in red font. Also, when the client is listed on your schedule, if there is an alert entered into this area, a red letter A will appear next to their name on the schedule. You can hover over this A with your mouse cursor in order to view the alert without going to the patient info page so that you can quickly review your day. In the Edit Client Info area, you also have the ability to indicate if a client is new, active, or inactive. Any patient entered into the system for the first time via the New Patient button will automatically be designated as a new patient on your schedule. If they happen to be a current client, simply click Current. A new client will be automatically switched to current status after they are charted on and the electronic records have been locked for the day. If you have completed therapy with a client, then switch your status to Inactive Status and click the Save Client Information. This will archive their name for your current patient database. You will have the opportunity to search any archived names in the database by going to your Old Patient button and typing in their name. Archive names will be available via the gray button. Simply click to expand your search to include inactive patients. Archived patient names will show up in gray in the search. If a client is re-entering therapy, simply go into their info page and edit their info to change them back to active status. Always remember to save your information. In the patient database accessed from the Edit Info button on the Patient's Information page, you will also notice a Delete from Record selection here. If a client has not been seen and there have not been any charges posted on their account, and they have not been charted on nor has insurance been billed, then you will be allowed to delete this client from your database. This is very helpful in cases where a client may have been mistakenly entered into the database twice or for those clients who do not show for their first session. Clients who have been charted on will not be available for deleting in order to maintain HIPAA compliance with record keeping. Thank you for watching Part 3 of Getting Started with TherapyAppointment.com. Part 4 will cover the therapist's preferences area, and Part 5 will be an overview of the process of using TherapyAppointment.com.